Hello, good morning. In this particular tutorial, we are going to discuss regarding analysis of plane traces. So basically in this introduction class, we are going to discuss what is mean by truss, what are the different types of trusses, and also classification of trusses, and also method of analysis for plane truss using method of joints and method of section especially basic steps involved in those analysis are studied are going to discuss in this particular section so now what is meant by determinate plane truss see a truss is a structure made up of triangular network and connected by pin joints and also those elements made of bar element or line element and lying in a single plane what it means means exactly it is an made up of triangular in the form of triangular network connected by pin joints and also it made up of number of line elements number of line elements hence a plane truss is a structure consists of number of bar or line elements all lying in a single plane all lying in a single plane and also those elements are in an interconnected in the form of triangular network in pin joints. Okay, these are different examples for trusses. Commonly uh, used up trusses as triangle truss and K truss in case of bridges and also fling truss in case of roof truss. So some basic example for plane trusses. So next, assumption made in truss analysis. Generally, we are doing certain assumptions in the analysis of plane trusses. What are those? This is a very, very important question. Several time asking in examination, like what are assumptions made in truss analysis? The following assumptions are made in truss analysis. Initially, the all members are connected together with pin joints, with pin joints, and also the truss structure is loaded at joints only. See, in case of beams and all uh, the structural member, what happens? Generally, beam carries member load. But in case of trusses, what happens? If you come to trusses, loads act at joints only. And also in the analysis of trusses, we are ignoring the sulfate of the member. Of the member. And also, the member are subjected to purely axial forces. What is mean by purely axial forces? whether it, it is subjected to tensile forces or it is subjected to compressive forces none other than other forces can occur in case of trusses okay so the members are subjected to only pure axial forces and also the last assumption is each member is of uniform cross-sectional area so here only the prismatic truss members which means different sectional area is not allowed in case of analysis of trusses these are the basic very very important assumptions made in analysis of trusses next part classification of trusses based on indeterminacy this classification is based mainly on indeterminate equation we already studied this equation m minus 2j plus r that is m equal 2j minus r this is the static indeterminacy of the stress of the truss equation therefore the truss can be based on this equation uh, the truss can be classified as perfect truss, redundant truss, and deficient truss. Let us see one by one what is meant by perfect truss. See, perfect truss means if the given truss holds the equation m equal to j minus r, then be termed as perfect truss. What it exactly means? Consider this example in which how many members are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 members are there. How many joints? A, B, C, D. Four joints are there. How many external support reaction? A joint A, roller support. Therefore, one VA. A joint B, hinge support. VB and HB. Therefore, totally, there are three external support reactions. M equal 5, J equal 4 and R equal 3. Then, apply these parameters in equation M equal 2J minus R. Then, you are getting 5 equals 5. M is 5. 2 into 4 minus 3. It will become 5. Hence, it is a perfect truss. Hence, it is a perfect truss. Perfect truss is also termed as determinate truss. Okay, this is the first classification of truss depending on indeterminacy equation. What a second one means? That is redundant truss. What it exactly means? It means 
m greater than 2j minus r number of members exceeds the equation 2j minus r then it is called redundant truss this is indeterminate truss because of increasing members the indeterminacy occurs clear so internal indeterminacy will occur because of this one member extra member how it happens i am adding extra diagonal bracings here because of this bracing what happens the number of member increased to 6 therefore 6 greater than 5 hence it is a indeterminate truss the last one is m less than 2j minus r in case i am removing both the bracings it's just like a rectangle this is a unstable this is not exactly a truss therefore it's a deficient truss this is a deficient truss clear so these are the basic classification of trusses next i am explaining regarding nature of trusses so i explained the axial forces trusses will subject it to only axial forces what it exactly mean if you consider a member in the member there are two joints say a and b there are two joints if the joints the forces acting away both the joints consider both the joints the forces acting away from the joints then we termed as tensile force with respect to joint please take care regarding this particular things when i am talking about tension i am talking about joint not member because in this case of trusses joints plays a major role if you come to another type of member the joints are subjected to inward forces or push so hence it is a compressive pulling forces at joint causes tension pushing forces at joint causes compression please remember these two nature of forces this is very very important when we are solving problem clear next we move on to analysis of trusses basically we are doing using two types of analysis the truss analysis can be done by two methods one is method of joints another one is method of section first i'm going to explain what are the different steps involved in method of joints step one basically we are going to check the given truss whether it is stable or not whether we are checking the given truss is perfect truss or not in other means in your syllabus or any kind of truss should be perfect that is it holds m equal to j minus r so generally the given truss holds this equation therefore i am going to check in step one whether the given truss is perfect or not using equation m equal to j minus r m equal to j minus r it's a general step the first step in method of joints or method of section both the step the both the methods the first step is same second step determine the external support reactions using equations of equilibrium that is sigma v equal 0 sigma h equal 0 and sigma m equal 0 external support reactions are computed using these equations of equilibrium in both method of joints and method of section the step one step two both are same you have to follow first two methods is same in both the methods step three consider you have to consider each joint for the analysis in which only two unknown members why because if you consider a joint it's just like a concurrent force system in concurrent force system we are ignoring the moment what are the equations of equilibrium for concurrent force system only sigma fx equals zero and sigma fy equals zero so use only those two equations of statics sigma v equals zero or sigma h equals zero and you must take care regarding particular joints that only two unknown members maximum two unknown members are allowed at each joint so you have to repeat the step three for all the joint until all member forces are determined in the given truss problem clear so you have to repeat this step three until you have to find all forces member member forces the condition only condition you have to remember in this particular thing is at every joint you must you you, you you don't have more than two unknown members you don't consider more than two unknown members only two unknown members are allowed okay so similarly next steps involved in method of section so in this particular method the first two steps i have already told that first we are checking the whether the given truss is perfect or not using m equal to j minus r 
The second step, we are going to determine the external support reaction using equations of equilibrium, three equations of equilibrium. In step three, what we are going to do exactly, we have to cut a section. We can cut a section in any manner. It may be inclined, it may be horizontal, or it may be vertical, or it may be curved, whatever it may be. The condition is the unknown member should be only three. And also at particular joint, there are two members should be passed. There should be common point two members for common point i will explain when you come to problem what it mean exactly clear and also the only thing as of now you just uh, keep in your mind that the, there is only three unknown members and next use equations of statics to determine those three unknown members clear so apply three equations of equilibrium sigma v equals zero sigma h equals zero and sigma m equals zero to get the unknown forces in the cutted members clear so in method of joints consider each joint the unknown member should be two in method of section you have to cut this the given truss is cut it into two parts the unknown member should be three clear not more than three unknown members so this is the basic thing you have to keep in your mind um, next classes we are going to discuss regarding problem and that time i will ex explain what exactly it means so please take all these notes and keep this point in your mind when we come into next subsequent classes by taking problems it will be helpful for you people clear so if you having any doubts uh, please feel free to ask clear so regarding uh, this particular thing we are taking numericals in next class thank you